portion of this video is brought to you by Incogni. Grid scale lithium ion batteries are our current go-to chemical energy storage solution, but they present their own challenges in safety, sustainability, cost, and longevity. However, the competition is heating up. New forms of thermal energy storage systems built using abundant, cheap materials are on the rise. And one company is aiming to sidestep the complications that come with chemical batteries, with bricks. And another company's weapon of choice is crushed volcanic rock. Talk about going back to basics to store massive amounts of energy. But is simple really best? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Why are people looking to store energy in bricks and crushed volcanic rock? It shouldn't be a shocking revelation to say that renewable energy like solar and wind is intermittent. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow, so we need to have cheap, reliable energy storage to save excess renewable energy production for when we need it. How much renewable energy are we losing out on? A 2020 report by Lane, Clark, and Peacock for Drax estimates that enough wind energy to power 800,000 homes in the United Kingdom went to waste over a two-year period due to a lack of storage. So to make the most efficient use of our wind and solar power, we need more reliable storage. On a grid level, lithium-ion batteries have considerable perks. They boast a high energy density, a high round-trip efficiency, and decently long cycle lives. However, lithium-ion's advantages are costly in more ways than one. Lithium is expensive, extraction is slow and not always environmentally friendly, and it has a lot of price volatility. Lithium-ion batteries also don't last as long as some other forms of energy storage tech. So thermal energy storage, or TES, systems are heating up as an appealing alternative. For one thing, TES systems don't necessarily require converting energy, keeping heat as heat, which means higher efficiency. In district heating systems or industrial applications, which we'll talk more about later, the heat put into the battery is taken right back out as is. Another significant edge is that TES systems are based on tech that's more down to earth. We're talking batteries that store excess energy as heat in water, molten salts, sand, gravel, and recently brick and rocks. With these materials at the core, you don't have to worry about scarcity, environmental impact, or explosions. They don't degrade and they're cheap, like really cheap. This is the foundation that the California-based company Rondo Energy and the Israeli company Bren Miller Energy built their TES systems upon. Now, they've both developed batteries offering similar benefits in almost identical language. Low-cost heat that can be stored for hours or days, decades-long lifespans, unlimited cycles free from performance degradation, and zero emissions. These batteries operate using bricks and rocks, respectively. Now, both companies promise similar outcomes, emphasizing the reduction in costs and the emissions associated with the industrial sector. They also both happened to make notable moves in November of 2022. Earlier that month, Bren Miller inaugurated its latest project, the testing of a utility-scale TES at a thermal power plant in Italy as part of a collaboration with NL, which is Europe's largest energy company. A week and a half later, Rondo officially announced the launch of the Rondo Heat Battery, or RHB. So how does brick and rock translate into efficient heat storage? Before I get to that, I'd like to thank Incogni for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I signed up for a newsletter from a small online retailer, and after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails I was receiving from companies I've never heard of. And that's because they sold my information to a data broker. I've also had my information leaked through data breaches at companies like Target, Sony, and others numerous times. Now, I'm sure you've experienced it too. And Cogni can help with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates on your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. It couldn't be easier. I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for quite a while now, and I've noticed a difference. If you want to take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. The first 100 people to use the code UNDECIDED at the link below will get 20% off Incogni. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to how brick and rock are translating into efficient heat storage. Let's start with Rondo. Its heat battery has been likened to a giant brick toaster. And the company's CEO, John O'Donnell, has referred to it as an insulated shoebox full of brick. Now, I don't want to know what kind of shoes he's wearing, but there you go. When the battery is charged, renewable energy from wind or solar or electricity from any source is converted into heat by its oven-like electric heating elements. This thermal radiation fires up the thousands of tons of bricks inside, which can reach temperatures of up to 1500 degrees Celsius. The battery can store this energy for hours or days. 
The company claims that an RHB can last for over 40 years, with several of its individual components able to last even longer, as well as being recyclable. Now, as O'Donnell pointed out in an interview last June, their bricks are inert and known to last for 100 years. This also means that their system doesn't contain anything that, in his words, can physically spill or release gas or catch fire. Once you want to pull heat back out of an RHB, a blower sends air up through the bricks. The air is superheated to above 1000 degrees Celsius, and the end result is heat in the form of superheated air or superheated steam released on demand. And these high temperatures are especially useful in industrial applications, which is Rondo's main target. RHBs are intended to directly replace fuel-fired boilers, furnaces, and kilns. Now here's where we need to zoom out a little bit to get a fuller picture. Heat is central to the massive number of industrial processes from sterilization to smelting. A 2014 study by the US Department of Energy estimated that the country's industrial sector uses about 24 quadrillion BTU, or British thermal units. BTU measured the amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. 24 quadrillion BTU is equivalent to roughly a third of the United States delivered energy supply. It's a lot of energy. Now, fossil fuels continue to be the primary source of energy for factories precisely because burning them is a quick and easy source of heat. And as you can expect, that has some major consequences. According to the International Energy Agency, a quarter of the world's emissions, which is about 9.4 gigatons of CO2, were directly produced by industrial activity in 2021. It's important to note that that figure doesn't include the indirect emissions from the electricity used to power them. Now, within the broad category of industry, the three top emitters of greenhouse gases include the production of iron and steel, chemicals and plastics, and cement. And the influence of cement in particular is pretty shocking. If it were a country, a really drab and gray country, it would be the world's third largest CO2 emitter behind China and the US. 70% of the emissions released by cement making come from the chemical reaction that produces clinker, its main ingredient. So the recipe shoulders most of the blame, but the remaining 30% is a result of fossil fuels to fire up the furnaces. Cement is a component of concrete, and concrete is the most consumed material on the planet, second only to water, which is kind of nuts. On a global level, cement and concrete production accounts for about 8 to 9% of greenhouse gases and 2 to 3% of energy demand. But while concrete isn't going away anytime soon, maybe its reliance on fossil fuels can. This isn't just about reducing emissions, though. It's also about saving money. And this is where Rondo is stepping up to help. Last July, the company announced its collaboration with Titan Cement Group. The goal is to reduce emissions that would otherwise come from burning fossil fuels by using Rondo heat batteries to capture energy from kiln flue gases, and then taking that heat to produce clinker. Later, in September, Rondo announced a partnership with Siam Cement Group, which also produces chemicals and paper. So far, RHBs are making a big difference, according to Rondo's claims. On the date of the battery's commercial launch, the company's senior vice president, Jeremy Keller, said that the facilities outfitted with RHBs are showing 50% to 90% reductions in emissions and reductions in operating costs of 30% or more. That's a nice one-two punch on the emissions and costs. Now, Rondo also claims a whopping 98% efficiency, which the company's YouTube channel clarifies is because the round-trip efficiency of basically all electric thermal energy technologies will be in the 95-plus percent range. In O'Donnell's words, the conversion of electricity to heat happens at 100% efficiency every time you turn on a heating appliance. We're back at that toaster metaphor again. So get your Pop-Tarts ready. Well, as for Bren Miller Energy, its line of B-Gen batteries work like RHBs and are trying to accomplish the same thing, provide industry with a clean source of heat. The main differences are that the B-Gen batteries stick within a lower range of 100 to 500 degrees Celsius for heat output, and instead of bricks, Bren Miller uses crushed rocks. Executive Vice President of Operations near Brenmiller explains that the rocks store heat inside cells that are stacked into a module, then into a pack. Electricity or heat goes in, and hot water, hot air, or steam comes back out. The energy input can be anything from exhaust heat, surplus steam, electricity straight from the grid during peak hours, wind, solar, <laughs> biomass. It's dealer's choice. For example, at Fort Lev, Brazil's largest manufacturer of water storage products, began using a BGen unit at its factory in Annapolis, Brazil, just last August. The company needs hot air to run its machines that mold plastic into water tanks, and its one megawatt hour BGen battery allows the company to swap natural gas for biomass. Now, Bren Miller claims that by making this switch, Fort Lev lowers the fuel costs of heating air by over 75% and lowers its greenhouse gas emissions by about 800 metric tons a year. The BGen BS7011 
a name that rolls right off the tongue, is charged by the combustion of wood chips or pellets and boasts an 80% efficiency. And that said, burning wood and wood pellets in the name of sustainability is a very controversial subject to say the least. And if the concept of using earthy materials to store heat sounds familiar, you might be thinking back to the sand battery built last summer in a small Finnish town by the country's own Polar Night Energy, which I covered in a previous video. Like Rondo and Bren Miller's batteries, the sand battery is a TES system that takes advantage of excess renewable power to squirrel away heat until it's needed. The sand battery is already warming homes and offices through a local district heating system. And like the sand battery, district heating is a potential application for both Rondo and Bren Miller's tech. District heating is basically an underground network of pipes that delivers heat to buildings from a central point. It offers a great opportunity for decarbonization by using renewable energy to distribute steam and hot water instead of relying on individual boilers. As a concept, it's actually been around since the use of geothermal water to warm houses in Pompeii. These days, you can find this kind of infrastructure all over China and Europe. There's also over 660 district heating systems throughout the United States, including in major cities like New York and San Francisco. In fact, Bren Miller has already been collaborated with the New York Power Authority since 2017. In 2020, the company installed a cogeneration system which generates both heat and electricity at the same time in the physical education building at Purchase College at the State University of New York. This replaced its existing district heating loop. The system takes exhaust from a turbine and uses it to provide about half the building's electricity alongside all of its heating and hot water. And more recently, during a December 2022 call with Bren Miller Energy Investors, Near Bren Miller said that the partnership is currently examining solutions for industrial manufacturing and for district heating in big buildings and cold locations. These examples only scratch the surface of what's possible. And for a deeper dig into the energy that travels underfoot, check out City Beautiful's video on district heating. It's a great YouTube channel that explores cities and their design, and they just released a video about this exact topic. I'll put a link in the description. Now back to the batteries and some of the gotchas or potential cons about the tech. Now Rondo and Bremmiller share another trait. Despite both companies' heavy promotion of their product's potential for industry, these things just don't get hot enough for steelmaking. Getting serious about decarbonization requires that we tackle steel specifically. The industry was responsible for over 3.3 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases in 2021. Meanwhile, wind turbines' underlying structure is ironically mostly made of steel. For now, Bren Miller is deliberately focusing on supplying medium range temperatures, setting the complexity of integration into steel factories. And this caveat also means that there's no cement. That's not to say that BGM batteries can't do much. In European countries, 30% of industrial heating applications require temperatures of less than 100 degrees Celsius. Another 27% do just fine with heat between 100 and 400 degrees Celsius, which is well within BGEN's maximum of 500 degrees. Rondo provides a higher temperature range, but its upper limit is 1500 degrees Celsius, and you need about 1600 degrees Celsius to produce steel. However, O'Donnell did say in an interview that it is possible for Rondo's heat battery to hit 1800 degrees Celsius in the future. In other words, things are just starting to heat up. Now, RHBs haven't been commercially available for long, and neither have Bren Miller's pilot projects in Brazil and Italy. Bren Miller also has another TES in the works, a $9.2 million, 31.5 megawatt hour B-Gen unit that's set to replace the boilers in a Philip Morris tobacco plant in Romania. For me, that raises the question of why a tobacco plant? Anyway, they plan to break ground in early 2023, so we still have to wait and see what these batteries are really capable of. In the meantime, Thermal storage is continuing to gain traction, with plenty of TES systems in development across the globe. Now, two of the largest upcoming projects are both 600 megawatt molten salt plants, one in the United Arab Emirates and the other in China. Let's hope they can make more than toast. So are you still undecided? Do you think that storing heat is a smart move? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, we'll be discussing some of your feedback. And if you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones over here. And thanks to all of my patrons who get ad-free versions of every video for your continued support. And welcome to new Supporter Plus member Paul Mack and producer Rick Cosgrove. You're helping to reduce my dependence on YouTube to pay for producing these videos. And thanks to all of you for watching and commenting. I'll see you in the next one.